The Vampire Diaries Season 8, Episode 9, The Simple Intimacy of the Near Touch. Now, I think this was a, a pretty good episode for Damon. It was very interesting um, going through this episode, and we see basically two sides with, you know, with, of course, Stefan having his humanity cut off. He's basically a villain, you know, at this point, pseudo-villain or anti-hero if you prefer. But we basically have two people on the wrong side of things trying to pull him towards being evil, but technically they both want different things, but somehow they still work together because Damon is trapped in trying to get rid of Sybil, and of course she wants him to be his lackey, her lackey again, and Stefan wants Damon to have zero humanity, like he knows that there's something in there where it's like, your humanity's off, but there's something in here that keeps you going back. Like there's something that keeps happening to you that makes you think or makes you say something or do something or feel something that you don't need to feel because it's distracting from what I'm trying to have right now is, you know, ripper me. And I love the way it played out because at first it was simple enough. It was like, okay, Stefan goes through and is like, well, we're going to go back to Mystic Falls. We're going to get this woman out of your head. And it goes the whole episode before we find out that he never meant Sybil. He meant Elena. That's like his big thing is that Elena is the one that's causing all these issues. And I thought it was very interesting that that's the conclusion that he came to. And it's more so, excuse me, Sybil having destroyed that within him is what's making that such a big issue. It, like it was actually Sybil's fault. You know, for Stefan not having the brother, his brother the way that he wants him. And I thought that was so interesting because, I'm like, if she didn't do all that subconscious crap, he wouldn't have to fight back so hard. He wouldn't have to keep, you know, holding on to that necklace to try to break through that subconscious, you know, bind and attach himself to Elena. It would just be like, yeah, that's exactly, you know, it would just be like, yeah, that's my past. I remember Elena. And then I cut it off when I went with Cade. But... Oddly enough, Sybil doing all that stuff to force him to work under her control is pretty much what led to this whole episode as an issue, uh, specifically for her and Stefan. And I just was like, that's actually very interesting that she kind of caused the issues for both of them. And somehow they end up working together because Stefan's like, well, I just want my brother to be, you know, done with Elena. And he kind of wants Sybil to just make it work because he knows like, oh, Sybil just wants this thing and then that's it and we can go about our business. So they end up working together. Of course, that pretty much falls apart for everybody. Like, no one involved really has anything happy happen to them at all in this entire episode. Caroline has to see Stefan going crazy. He turns a young girl into a vampire against her will. Uh, Damon is not only left by Stefan, but he is now, by the very end of the episode, filled with all of the emotions that he's been ignoring for such a long time, killing all these people and not caring about Enzo and all this other stuff. And so now he's trapped. The whole episode, whole next episode is him almost in a comatose state because Sybil shot his humanity back into him. And it's like, well, that sucks. So I don't know what's going to happen with him. Um, like I said, Stefan didn't get the brother that he wanted. Uh, Sybil didn't really get what she wanted. She got trapped. She got punched in the face. She got all messed up. And she kind of got a revenge, like a tiny bit, but not really because I'm sure he'll be fine nothing that is really going to happen and they still have her chained up she didn't of course get what she want which once again like they work together but not really because Stefan's just like here you go and he gave um caroline the the thing the actual bell um or the ball uh for the bell the striker that's what they i'm trying to remember these bell terms I, i've never heard them before but he just hands her hands it over to her and i'm like oh well, that's done like he didn't really give a crap and nobody really got what they wanted at all this whole episode maybe I guess Matt did. Matt and uh, the other guy whose name I, I still can't remember, but the two of them uh, end up kind of working with Selene a little bit, and she seems to give some sort of answer. They kind of cliffhanger it, of course, but she gives some sort of answer where it's like there's something that we want to hear from her, and that's about it. They're like the only two characters that truly get what they want, where it's like this is all we were trying to do is get revenge and get these items so that they didn't get them. And they pretty much got everything. So we'll see what happens. They got the bell. They have uh, the staff of, of Akadeus or whatever he was saying. And they also have the strikers. So they have the entire portion to kill both um, Sybil and Selene. But I'm assuming this big mystery, my guess at least, is that this could also kill Cade. 
but they have to draw him out in order for it to do that. So I'm curious if that's gonna if that's actually what they're gonna reveal or if it's just gonna be something else because of course, you know, Celine wants to live and it's interesting despite the fact that she's fighting with her sister, it surprises me that she'd be okay with them like killing her off because that's the only reason they're trying to get this bell is to really kill both of them. So there's something that she has planned like hey I definitely have some very important news or some serious form of leverage that will save myself and possibly uh, my sister if you know like I said they're having their spat but I don't know if Selene would just be like whatever kill Sybil like it doesn't matter so I am curious what that answer is going to be but that, that as of now that's my big theory is that it's going to be if they can draw out Cade not only will they be able to use the bell to kill the sirens but they'll be able to kill him as well so very interesting. Um, it seems like it works, you know, because we saw it have a slight effect on Bonnie. Uh, I had an effect on the girls as well. So it works on, it seems like it works on any magical creature that's not a vampire. Uh, we haven't really seen it used against werewolves. Um, who knows what's happening with the originals if they'll bring them in for like this last season. Sadly, uh, of course, they can't use Tyler as an example. So it's very interesting with that. It's like it affected... Uh, Bonnie early on in the season where she felt it and that was when her, you know, it was like she had the residual uh, powers there which we still haven't really seen come back yet so I don't know if that was an actual hint or if that was just showing us like hey this isn't saying Bonnie's powers are coming back it's just saying any magical thing that's not already dead like a vampire is affected by this bell so with Kate being a psychic I would assume that he could get affected just like um, Alaric and Caroline's daughters were affected and they're, you know, they siphon off magic, but they were still affected by this thing and it hurt them. So I'm very curious, um, if that really is going to be the answer that this bell can actually like wipe out Cade as well. But not only do we have that as our little cliffhanger thing, we also have, um, a, a part of the side story in this episode revolves around, uh, Bonnie and Enzo who make a return from their trip from Paris, excuse me, and it was very interesting watching Enzo kind of dance around a fairly obvious idea. Like he, you know, the first thing they do when Bonnie comes back, she's like, yeah, it's this necklace and it's Enzo's blood in it. And I was like, hmm, what could that, you know, they even talk about it as soon as they introduce it. Like, that's weird, right? Like, it, you know, it seems like a simple gesture of love, but we know what that means. And even Caroline first brings it up. Like, you know, you would never do that anyway, because your body minute like just the way her character's been as a witch and you know stuff like that so it was very interesting how they went about that and she's like you know I, I couldn't do it if I wanted to because of course she's linked to Elena and so they dance around this idea and Enzo saying like well if you could of your own will would you do it if it was possible and it, it's just a bit of a back and forth and I feel like that's just a little taste of something to come Maybe it won't be argument based where they have to really talk about it, but there might be some catalyst where, who knows, maybe she does end up doing that, or maybe they find a cure for Elena, or they might actually go the route that they uh, suggested, which is, what if Enzo took the cure and he became human, that way he could live out his days um, well, as a normal human, that way they would both live together. I mean, one most likely would still die, you know, before the other, but it wouldn't be an eternity or, you know, centuries upon centuries where he'd look back and be like, that was, you know, the only woman I, like, truly loved and she's gone and she's been gone for hundreds and hundreds of years. So it'll be interesting if they actually do that, where he takes the cure to be human with her so that they can both live, like, a normal life and, you know, they, they die off as human. So a lot of good stuff in this and very interesting... Um, I, I feel like it was a, a really subtle episode. Like, it was mostly focused on Damon, and, you know, they kind of wrapped it in with the uh, Miss Mystic Falls thing, which I thought was very interesting, going back to that, and how that was the that was the definitive moment where Damon realized how he felt about Elena and stuff like that. And I was like, this is actually pretty cool. I like the way they did the callbacks to that episode, and the dancing, and, you know, the stairwell and all that stuff. Obviously, it's the same location. But I like the way they used this episode. You know, they used the set... Uh, the characters, Matt actually had some good stuff in this, he managed to survive, as always, but, you know, he's fighting with the cops, and he was just taking people out, he, it was only two people, but still, I was like, he's doing pretty good in this episode, like, they, you know, he got the drop on him in the first part, the second guy, he knew what was happening, he's like, why, you know, like, what's happening here, so he knew what to expect, and he still managed to survive that second one, where the guy already had his gun pulled on him and everything, but... 
as usual, Matt continues to survive as a human character, but I'm excited for where we're headed with this Damon stuff and him being trapped in his own mind. It seems like he does break out at some point, but it's really hard to tell if the scene with um, Damon talking to Stefan was in the real world or if that was just all in his head. Like, I'm assuming it was, but it seemed like he was saying some weird dialogue. Like, I'm going to burn the city to the ground. Maybe that's just, you know, in Stefan's mind as well. Like, oh, I have to kill my brother. Because that was kind of the point of the little promo scene. Like, you know, you're the vampire running around in my head and not me. So I'm definitely excited to see how they manage to pull him out of this and what they end up doing with Sybil, considering they do actually have her locked up and they also have the, all the components for the bell. So there's a lot that can happen in this next episode. I'm, I'm definitely excited for it. But I would love to know what you guys thought about this episode. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And I actually want to know, how do you guys think... Uh, Damon is going to be when he breaks out of this whole humanity thing like of course they're going to get him out of it somehow some way at some point if not in the actual next episode probably the one after that the, the final season they they got to keep they, you know they got to keep things moving so I feel like he'll be out of it by the end of the next episode but will he be back to his old self where he's you know just Damon with his humanity on or is he still going to be you know, somehow, because of the way they did it with Sybil, just, like, forcing it on him and he didn't do it himself. I mean, that's why he's trapped in his own mind anyways, because she forced it on him. He didn't, you know, switch it. So, I feel like there's some new element to that that they can definitely go with. But I would love to know your theories on how that's going to play out once he uh, kind of snaps out of it. And like I said, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode in general. So, please comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.